the babies. Oh my goodness. Oh. Ah. <laughs> you guys, I get to go to Wawa today. So you're currently propped up on a tomato on my garden bench and my hair is in rag rollers and no microphone sound quality today because we're outside of my backyard at 6 a.m. I'm gonna take the dogs for a walk before I drive three hours to Pennsylvania for a wedding. Um, I look insane. Um, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Are you willing to quickly rehash for the vlog what we are looking at here? Do you want my hair? In the, your blog? I have my hair in my blog right now. Mm, Alright, valid. Vlog. Um, so, <laughs> I decided I needed some privacy, and Google Maps has a thing where you can blur out your house. So mm -hmm. I requested it like, I don't know, a year or two ago, and it takes a long time. And so we got That's this. That's our house. <laughs> picture uh, thing for home insurance, and they care so much about the quality details. of their, yeah. the details are so important to them that they didn't bother to double check that and mailed it out like that. I can show you the, the other side things. but it has our address yeah, on it. Yeah, it's the little things. And there it is, a place of honor forevermore in our kitchen. Greetings from my bathroom. I just want to document how my hair came out now because I'm about to drive three hours. This side we're not gonna talk about it. This side, though, looks like a wig. I'm just gonna keep fiddling with it. I haven't done rollers in a while. And by in a while, I mean I haven't done rollers on my own head since maybe fifth grade. This particular set of rag rollers, foam rollers, is literally like almost 20 years old. So does that make it vintage? I don't know, but. Coming at you live from my trunk, the trunk of my Subaru. They're loading up. This is my baboon to the moon go bag. I think it's the medium. It's not the smallest and it's not the largest. This is my first trip with it. And I love it so far um, because I'm able to load it like a duffel bag. And it's got so many pockets, I like that it opens all the way around. But I can wear it like a backpack. And I can also pick it up on any given side. It's so versatile. I love it so much. I'm so obsessed with it. I like saw an ad on Facebook and was like, I need to order one. I also have a matching fanny pack in yellow, but I'm not bringing that on this trip with me. This is my traveling outfit. I'm not wearing, well, I might wear the Crocs. I'm not sure. I have um, boots that I'm gonna change into. This is how my hair came out and I'm obsessed with it. Little vintage vibe. I'm totally overexposed, it's fine. Okay, I have to go get um, an air mattress because I'm staying at a motel because that was the hotel that was reserved for the wedding. Um, and I'm nervous and just in case it's gross, I wanna have an air mattress. I'm checking in briefly from the antique store. I'm in Pennsylvania now and I have to do this quickly so that I don't get copywritten for the Fleetwood Mac playing in the background. I'm in an antique store, so why is there so much radon? Somebody explain that to me right now. I'm disgusted. Hi. Well, here I am. I am in a Super 8 motel. And the venue is only 12 minutes away, even though my original, like when I looked it up in relation to this Super 8, it said it was like 45 minutes away. So I don't know what's up with Google Maps, but um, it's 3.35 and the wedding is at 4.30. And this is all my hair is doing at this point. So I really just need to do my makeup and that'll take like 15 minutes. So I've got a little less than an hour to kill. But I went to the antique store, so do an antique haul, I guess. Where's my receipt? Cottage Antiques Crafts. It's like an antique store, but a lot of the vendors also have like crafts and handmade items. And 
Ugh, I need to like get to work and find better antique stores because I've been to this one before. There's a spider in here. Good God. Hello. I've, I've been to this antique store before, like twice when I was going to college in the area. Um, but I didn't like explore that much. Um, but similar to the only other antique store I've been in, been to near my home, it, it's not a lot of actual antiques. It's like some really ugly, kitschy, mid-modern stuff. And then a lot of just like random contemporary crap I've seen on TV stuff. And a lot of like handmade quilted things with like novelty fabric. So since we're getting towards Halloween, there was a lot of like, oh, quilted trick or treat bags and pillowcases. There were some vintage handmade quilts that were gorgeous, lovely quality. We're in Pennsylvania, so quilting is huge here. But they're like $110 and I don't have the budget for that. Um, but there's not a lot of actual antique stuff. Like if stuff is mid-century, I, I guess technically that's antique. I don't know what the technical definition of antique is. But the majority of the stuff I saw was modern. There was so much Ray Dunn. There were multiple vendors that had whole display cases full of Ray Dunn. It is the year of our Lord 2021. What is Ray Dunn doing in an antique store? And anyway, found this gorgeous Degas tin. This is definitely not antique. It's like, it's a, like a chocolate <laughs> container from like the 90s. But I, um, I love Degas and it's gold and it fits my aesthetic. My mom used to have, um, kind of smells like chocolate. My mom used to have a serving tray. Um, and I think it was the same painting. She used to have a Degas serving tray made of like melon meat or something. I think I broke it at one point, but I love Degas. So that'll be going in my room just for something. But I also bought some antique hankies. Vintage, like they're not antique antique, but they're pretty. This one has like violets on it, very on brand. This one has tulips and a lovely little embroidered edging on it. Let's see, exposure, fix yourself. I right, whatever. I'm not getting up. Now this one's interesting because I like, you know, I love looking at pastel florals, but I tend to wear more tones. So I was like, I should probably get something that will go with my outfits. This one is brown and white color blocked with this little floral embroidery. Kind of looks like dandelions. So that was nice. These were like two or three bucks each. This is more of the craft side. There's like a bunch of like locally made soaps. I like bar soap, you know, more sustainable. Um, this one, I don't think it actually is locally made. I mean, it could be, I don't want to be like xenophobe. No, it says made in China. I was going to say, I don't think it's made locally because it has um, Chinese characters on it, but it's rose soap. Um, bee and flower rose soap made in China. I don't know. It smells fantastic and it was two dollars. It has, um, I can't really see the packaging very well, but mm, common theme here. We're in front of a window. There's like a construction site right outside the window because they're building a Dunkin' Donuts. Um, but I like that. I like soap. So into the Degas tin it goes. Um, maybe it'll make the handkerchief smell nice. Worst things have happened. Honey Almond Oatmeal Soap by Mint and Wine. They have an Etsy if you'd like to check them out. Not that I'm, you know, in any way partnering with them. But again, um, this is $5 handmade soap. It smells nice. Honey Almond Oatmeal. Always good to have bar soap on hand. And then this was my big splurge purchase. It is, um, it is a Coca-Cola tray and it was, um, labeled very specifically to say it's in good condition. I want to say it's from hmm, 40s is what I want to go with. Um, 40s or 50s it would be the early 50s. Greetings from editing Emma. I um I looked it up and it is indeed from 1953 so my vintage dating skills are not too shabby. Um, oh, isn't she gorgeous? Isn't she gorgeous? Kind of, kind of what I'm working with here. Um, I'm not gonna lie, that's more the shade of ginger I was going for. And I definitely should have like fixed the exposure before pressing record, but it's fine. We're working with what we got. Um, so it's got this lovely little pinup-esque girl, a little beret, feather in her cap. And then all along the inside, it's got like little 
Americana illustrations of situations within which one might enjoy a Coke. Um, and I have, I'll have to do like a room tour at some point, but I have another antique Coke tin, Coke tin, Coke tray that I'm like, this is 40s, 50s. I, it feels to me like there's a chance, there snows no season. It feels to me like there's a good chance that this is a vintage reproduction just because of like it's in such good condition um especially i don't know the typography here the font just looks very modern um like it just doesn't seem aged at all but it was only 25 dollars um and for like a good quality reproduction i would be fine paying that price and then if it is indeed actually vintage, if I can ever find a way to authenticate that, then $25 is still a good price for that. So I'm not upset about it. Um, and my other antique Coke tray is from the 20s. It's not in good condition. It's very rusty. And when I was, um, I was at Key to the Past Antiques at East Haven, Connecticut, and in that same vendor's booth, there was another Coke tray that looked to be a little bit older, like late 1910s. Um, that was in better condition, but it was oval shaped, which was interesting, but I like the rectangular shape. The one I got was like $8 because it's like all rusty and has paint flaking off, but you can still see the main image just fine. Um, and then the other one was like $15. So I think I'm not specifically a collector of Coca-Cola memorabilia, um, but I like pretty vintage pinup ladies as a dyke, so. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna put on some music and get ready for the wedding. I'm at the wedding. Very loud. I look this good at 8 a.m. Let's go get some coffee. I've never been to Sheets. I know that there is a big Wawa versus Sheets rivalry. So let's see if it holds up. All right, my friends, we have reached the end of our journey. I am in the Wawa parking lot. Let's have a whole bunch of food. Um, not that I'm all gonna eat now, because that would probably lead to me almost pooping myself on the highway. Um, I'm gonna eat some of it now and then share some of it with my dad once I reheat it in three hours at home. But I had a great day today, even though I got rained on in the park. Um, I went and I had brunch with one of my professors who was also one of my closest friends. Um, I love him so much. He's like an uncle to me. Um, I don't know if he knows that. I think he does know that. There was one semester where I wasn't taking his class, but I didn't have anything during that class time. And, um, I missed him and his presence is good for my mental health. So he let me just kind of sit in the corner of the auditorium the whole time. The whole, like, almost every... I was there for the whole semester and he would have me like read in for people and see it's when their acting partners were out. Um, but we went to brunch and we did some catching up because I haven't seen him in like two and a half years because he wasn't even at our little commencement recognition ceremony because the administration decided to keep it down to bare minimum like students, families, and then like the president, the dean, and the provost was all that was there. So I haven't seen this man since March of 2020. That's not two and a half years. I know he got that math wrong. Neither of us are good at math. We're theater people. But it was really great. And we shared some cheesecake. 
which was nice. We had a whole conversation about cheesecake. Um, and then I went to the art museum, the Allentown Art Museum, which um, is free on Sundays. So I made a donation and I also got a bunch of board books in the gift shop, um, art history for babies essentially, which I'm very excited to bring into the classroom on Tuesday. Um, and it is, it's 6.05 right now, the three hour drive home. So I'm gonna get home around nine, but I'm so glad that I realized I have Labor Day off. So that means I can sleep in tomorrow. I was gonna toast you with my macchiato, but it's so hot that I can't hold the cup. My sheets latte ended up being pretty good. Um, surprisingly, Wawa doesn't have as many flavor options for their espresso beverages, which is wild because you can get a lot of flavors in their other handcrafted beverages. Um, but whatever, I got like salted caramel or something. So I'm sure it'll be good because it's got sugar in it and it's oat milk. So like not a lot of ways that could go wrong unless the espresso is bad, which is possible. So I'm going to toast you with my boom boom sauce. I got, I like abandoned my tenuous vegetarianism for the weekend and I got cheesesteak mac and cheese, which is obviously nothing close to a real cheesesteak, but I got cheesesteak mac and cheese. I got a couple chicken tenders, got the boom boom sauce. I got I got a, an apple fritter that I'm definitely not going to eat until later. I think I'm going to put it like in the microwave and like make it all warm and melty. It's going to be so good. Cheddar jalapeno bites. I got to eat these first because I always make me poop myself. And I need that to hit me before I get on the road. So, cheers. Enjoy. I know I will.